Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for joining us for this R4 Bioinfo series. So we launched this series in September 2020. Uh, I'm Hedja Atmani, I'm bioinformatician at Pasteur Institute of Tunis and co-founder of Our Ladies Tunis. I have the great pleasure uh, today to have with us Chan Liu. Thank you, Chan Liu, for accepting our invitation. So uh, before moving on in introducing Chan Yu, we want you to we want to introduce you to the Our Ladies Tunis and Our Ladies Initiative. Mune, please, can you share your screen? Yes. I'll share my screen now. Oh no, Hello, Mune, we welcome share to this it. workshop session. Sorry. Before oh, starting sorry. the workshop, we'll introduce you to the Our Ladies Global and Our Ladies Tunis Initiative. The R community suffers from an underrepresentation of minority genders in every role and area of participation, whether as leaders, package developers, conference speakers, conference participants, educators, or users. As a diversity initiative, the mission of Our Ladies is to achieve proportionate representation by encouraging, inspiring, and empowering people of genders currently underrepresented in the R community and to facilitate individual and collective progress worldwide. Gabriela de Caros founded Our Ladies on October 1, 2012. Our Ladies Global was born and the grant was awarded in September 2016. Since then Our Ladies has grown to 170 chapters in 44 countries and 39,000 members. Our Ladies Tunis is part of Our Ladies Initiative and was created in May 2020 by women working as data scientists and biostatisticians and bioinformaticians. Our goal is to create an R community in Tunis and empower underrepresented genders in the R community. This is the core team of Our Ladies Tunis. Come and join our community on social media. This presentation was made with R Markdown. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy our workshop. Uh, thank you, Mune. So, uh, Dr. Chan Yu joined the Department of Biostatistics and Bio Bioinformatics Faculty at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center as an assistant professor of oncology in October 2019. Prior to that, she was a postdoc affiliate uh, supervisor by uh, Dr. Martin Morgan in the Bioconductor core team. She has earned her PhD in Biostatistics, Master in Biostatistics and Biochemistry and Molecular Biology and BA in Bioengineering. Dr. Liu is currently a CTSI scholar founded by the Buffalo Transitional Consortium BTC Scholar Program. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Chan Liu, for being with us today. So to talk about connecting bioconductor to other bioinformatics tool using RCWL application in single cell RNA-seq data. Thank you very much. The screen is yours. Thank you so much, Hedia, for the nice introduction. So I will share my screen now. Let me, okay. So thank you, Hedy, and uh, thank you everyone from the Our Ladies uh, Tunis uh, team, leader team. I'm really honored to be invited and to meet you, all of you. Like I'm so impressed that like the attendees are from uh, not only Tunis, but like everywhere around the world. And um, really nice to meet you guys. And uh, so my name is Chen Liu. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biostatistics and Bioinformatics in Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in the USA. So I'm a new faculty. And prior to that, I worked closely with Dr. Maggie Morgan in the Bioconduct core team. So we are still working closely right now and meet free, uh, like off regularly. Today, I will be introducing you a topic of how to connecting bioconductor to other bioinformatics tools using RCWL and with an application in single cell RNA sequencing data. So first, uh, I will start my uh, workshop with a short introductions uh, slice, uh, which will take about 30 minutes, and then we'll 
uh, go to the lab demo with the single CRI sequencing, real data pre-processing. And uh, there are some important links. Uh, let me paste all of these to the chat board so that you can have access. So these links, um, for people who want to run the uh, workshop code, uh, live with me, you need to uh, install the Docker or uh, you need to install the STAR tool if you don't have Docker, uh, following the instructions on the GitHub page. So for the other people who doesn't have the access to Docker or the STAR uh, tools, just uh, you can go to the package down website to see the workshop, I'll show you. This is the package down page. There are some instructions like the same as the readme in the GitHub page. And then click on the workshop icon over here. You will see uh, the same contents of today's workshop with all the code chunks that will be needed and all the evaluated uh, results will be showing over here. There are some uh, evaluated results are showing here. You don't need to uh, evaluate them all by yourself. You can see the results here. And there are some figures included also. Feel free to check out this page if you like uh, have a hiccup on your R session or anything. And there's also another way to uh, for the workshop materials is to go to our website called rcwl.org. So there is um, uh, in the navigation bar, there's a case studies. And in that, there's the single CRN sequencing pre-processing and you can click on it. It will navigate you to this page with the single CRN sequencing um, data pre-processing case study. Everything like uh, mostly the same as the workshop uh, materials. This is a simpli simplified version and more stable on our website and you can come back anytime. So the the web page, uh, the web address is simply rcwl.org. And then we have been constantly updating this um, website. I will give you more details a little bit later in my slides. Okay. Uh, so please do install the Docker prehand. Those are the prerequisites if you want to do the lab demo with me. And that will take some time, but should be finished before I go to the lab demo. So today I will mainly talk about the, like the bell conductor tool chain for reproducible bioinformatics pipelines using the two bell conductor packages. One is called RCWL for easy uh, wrapping of the command line tools into R tools and uh, RCW pipelines package, which manages a collection of uh, like very commonly used bioinformatics command line tools and pipelines that can be used directly, searched and used directly by the users. And then uh, I will give you a brief introduction of why, what, and how to use workflow languages uh, within R. And uh, we'll go to the workshop live demo a little bit later and there's a QA session after that. Again, feel free to interrupt me during my presentation and uh, feel free to post any questions in the chat box. And hopefully Chang will be answering your questions in real time to be more efficient. So this figure shows a typical genomic data analytics flow. Uh, there are several steps are already included. For example, the how to access the data from your uh, like local or database files, and you need to pre-process your data, uh, doing some data cleaning, data transformation using some command line tools, and then it goes to the modeling part, which. Uh, where you will be using some like modeling, statistical modeling or machine learning techniques uh, to do data analysis. These are, this step is mainly based on R bell conductor and Python uh, with some people's preference and then report the result with visualization and the report mainly based on R, R bell conductor and Python. So usually when we talk about 
bioinformatics analysis, we are more likely referencing the R bioconductor or the Python uh, programming, which is uh, mainly focusing on the modeling part, modeling step of the data analysis flow. For example, if you are doing a whole genome sequencing analysis within R or bioconductor, you can do your variant annotation and variant filtering uh, using the R bioconduct packages. However, uh, you first, before you uh, start doing these steps in, within R, you do need to have the variants ready, so which requires some pre-processing steps uh, for like you need to first QC your data using tools such as FastQC. You need to map your um, map your reading reads to the reference genome, for example, using the BWA, and you need to call the variants uh, using like, for example, the GTK toolkits. So most uh, the, the tools we have mentioned here are based on command line programming. So you do need to evaluate, you do need to use these tools using the shell, using a shell script, like to with some specific um, programmer for each specific tool. And these are many command line tools and uh, usually a lot of command line tools will be included for uh, like complete data analysis. With, the, with so many command line tools included and uh, it brings big challenges for reproducibility. Usually when people want to reproduce a new method that has been just published to include a lot of issues uh, for a successful reproduction. First, uh, because of the command line tools are based on different softwares, there is very complicated software dependencies you need to figure out and solve about. Uh, and we do need some specific and stable versions for a specific command line tool uh, for specific data analysis. And also like the input and output between different steps are usually very complex and it's very time consuming to convert into the, like the required format for a specific tool. And also it needs a standardized description language to connect the steps with the, with the inputs and outputs. And also people are using like different computing environments. Some are using their local computers with different operating systems. Some works on the high performance computing with different job submitting systems and some are working on the cloud uh, for very large data sets. So all these, uh, all these challenges adds to the, like the harness of reproduce for uh, like successful reproducibility. People have actually tried to quantify the reproducibility in the computational biology and estimated about 280 hours for a novice who uh, doesn't have much of the bioinformatics uh, expertise or skills beforehand. It takes like so much time to be fully reproduced uh, a new method. So one solution of uh, to conquer these challenges is the workflow languages. So what are workflow languages? They are written in a structured language and combine different bioinformatics tools, especially command line tools, which are used as the, in the pre-processing steps to accomplish a specific data analysis tasks. For example, the common workflow language and some other popular workflow languages include the next flow, the workflow a description language by Broad Institute, and the snake make a Python workflow manager. So they have been very um, widely used in data intensive science, such as bioinformatics, medical imaging, and machine learning and lecture. And the common workflow language has been supported on many platforms such as the Galax and Cromwell. So a major um, point for this uh, workflow language is that they use the software management system, such as the bio containers to solve the software installation conflicts and also the, using Docker to containerize all the softwares that are related to a specific workflow. So users don't need to worry about the software installation and software dependencies. 
so many advantages of using workflow language in doing your data analysis, it brings new challenges. First, they are the workflow languages. They are new, a new language, like similar to the command line tools. They are a new language which requires the command line programming. So it brings a steep learning curve for wet lab cancer researchers and even for skilled data analysts who are mainly using R or Python for their data analysis. Learning a new program, Learning a new programming language is hard. And also, since mostly most of the workflow languages are covering only the like the command line tools in the upstream data analysis, it lacks a connection to the downstream data analysis for typical bioinformatics pipelines, which usually involves the R conductor packages. So as the workflow language covers more on the upstream and lacks the connectivity to the downstream tools, it uh, in turn lacks the interoperability with the downstream data analysis tools using the R packages or a specific R functions. And also mostly uh, uh, most of the common uh, workflows based on the common, based on the workflow languages, uh, they need a more modularization for easy sharing and reusing. So especially for some overlapping steps in different data analysis, which is very common. You don't want to like do this, use the same code again and again. We want to reuse them and modularize them to make them more easier, like much easier to reuse. So to conquer tackle these challenges of using workflow language. We have uh, this research project called our bioconductor tool chain for reproducible bioinformatics pipelines. So our first aim is to develop a robust and scalable bioconductor interface for a common workflow language. And the second aim is to collect and catalog commonly used and emerging bioinformatics tools into reproducible CWL pipelines. And third aim is, is to build the foundation for establishment of a community-driven platform of open source, open development of bioinformatics pipelines. So the aim one is uh, actually, uh, with the aim one, we actually want to reduce the learning curve required to implement workflow languages and engaging reproducible and uh, biomedical data analysis. So for, like, like common R or Python users. We don't want you to learn a new programming language out from scratch. Uh, you can use our RCWL package to write any CWI pipelines all within R. So the RCWL package is an R bioconductor package, which works as an R interface to common workflow language. So you can write any common workflow language scripts from in from within R, like without any prior knowledge of CWL. So this figure shows the main uh, three major functions uh, for the RCWL package as highlighted in green over here. So we provide these um, functionalities for people to composite any, RC, uh, any CWL tools and CWL workflows into the R tools and pipelines within R. And then we have the functionalities for you to visualize the pipeline you have built using this diagram. And also we provide like different functionalities for uh, easy execution of your pipeline all through R. For example, using your local computer and using the high performance computing to submit parallel jobs. And you can even use the Shani interface um, to do your data analysis without like knowledge of R or uh, without worrying about software installations. So the RCWI package provides functionalities to standardize the development of CWI pipelines within R and Bioconductor. And it enables the best practices and standardize the data flow between steps by defining the CWI steps to connect all the, like the tools within the pipeline. And also RCWI is 
designed to promote the modularization of tools for easy sharing of established pipelines or critical steps. So this figure shows a, like a simplified single cell RNA pre-processing pipeline, which includes some um, pre-processing some pre-processing command line tools, such as the fast QC for QC and the star solo for uh, read alignment. And it also includes the droplet utils, which is the downstream data analysis required for uh, the single cell RNA sequencing data to return uh, to produce a high quality count matrix. So in order to connect all of these separate tools, including the command line tool, of Star Solo and uh, our bell connector to droplet utils into a complete R uh, workflow, we need to do the following. Three steps are included mostly. First, we need to build the CWL tool. Here will be the tool for Star Solo and droplet utils. So the major function is called CWL process, so which requires the base command of the tool. So it is called star. If you are doing it as a command line tool, you need to put star in your shell script as the first word, right? So this is the command line tool you're going to use. And the inputs and outputs for this tool. Here, the, it takes two inputs. One is the fast Q files, and one is the reference genome, which will be do the alignment. So we need to define the type of the fast Q file and the prefix. If you are using command, if you are using command line, so it will be read files in for the references, the directory prefix will be genome dir and how about the output of the star solo? We also need to be defined here. It will be the BAM file uh, from star solo and the solo directory, uh, which saves the major al alignment results uh, here. So by putting in those. Um, inputs and outputs and base command. And then we got it ready as a star, uh, got it ready, uh, our object called star solo as an R tool that is ready to be used within R. So the second step, so now we have defined a tool for star solo and uh, same, uh, similarly, we use the same uh, procedure to define the tool for droplet utils in step one, and then we can connect these two tools into a pipeline uh, by simply using the plus sign over here. So the major uh, things to notice is that the major function will be the CWL workflow, which includes all the inputs and outputs for the whole pipeline. Uh, for the whole pipeline, not an individual tool. Here, the, for the whole pipeline, we need two inputs. One is the fast queue found out when is the reference. But for the output of this pipeline, we need the output of BAM file, SAM file from star solo, and the solo directory from star solo, and another output from droplet utils. It is the um, single cell experiment R object. We be returned from droplet utils, and we define these three as the output for the um, whole workflow. And then we put the inputs and output into the CWL workflow and assign it to the SC pipe. And we need to define the CWL step for star solo. Uh, the input takes the fast queue and reference and the CWL step for the uh, droplet utils, which takes the input from star solo, the solo folder. So these two steps connect the input and output between these tools because the output of the star solo will be the input of droplet utils, which is defined over here. And then... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes. Sorry, I didn't understood very well. So the ID, is it the uh, ID fast queue and reference and the bump? Is it the... This ID? Yeah, yeah this ID. What the ID means? So you need to, uh, so you need to assign an ID for each of the like input parameter, and it will be used. For example, um, like a tag. Is it like a tag? It is like a tag that you use only in R. Okay. So for example, this solo, the ID equals to solo for output two. Here, 
we we'll see the like the for the droplet utils step, it takes the input from star solo. The star solo is the name of the tool we have uh, defined over here. This is the name of star solo and slash solo. Solo is the ID name for this output. So the output from step star solo and uh, the folder name is called, the ID name is called solo. So this defines the like the file path of the output of the star solo tool, which will be used as the input for the droplet utils tool. Thank you. So this is mainly being used for passing those uh, inputs and outputs between each tool. Thanks for the question. And uh, if I if I um, went too fast, please just uh, remind me. I think maybe I'm a little fast, right? <laughs> I will go to more details in our lab demo. So these are some just pseudo code. I'm just showing you the major steps of uh, building a tool or pipeline. So then we can use the like the plus sign to simply add the initiation of this WL workflow defined here, plus the step one of star solo, plus step two of the droplet utils. And we got a pipeline called SCPAP. This is uh, our object, which can be used in our to um, submit uh, for execution. So the third step is to uh, simply execute the pipeline within R. So as I have just mentioned, we have three functionalities. One is the run CWL, which you can run it using your local computer. You just uh, specify the SCPAP you have just defined, the pipeline over here, and the output directory where do you want to save all the output files from the whole pipeline, the input list and prime list. Uh, for your inputs and uh, parameter list if you're running those in batch uh, on a high performance computing. And everything is submitted uh, with the help of LC parallel. You can submit parallel jobs for different samples to facilitate your execution. And the internal code will be uh, evaluated as the CWL scripts and uh, be executed and return the results. So we do have this shiny application and uh, like uh, for people who want to like for, uh, especially for like more white lab um, researchers, if they want to reproduce a new nature protocol, but all the most of the protocol are about the experiments, but it do include some computational biology steps. Uh, if you want to do that, you don't need to install any software, you don't need to have any prior knowledge of multiple programming languages. So you just use the Shani app and put in the file path in each of the input parameters over here. And you click run and you will get all the outputs and you can have the commands ready and you can see the log easily. So one thing I want to mention is that we do have a, a website for our project. So it's called uh, rcwl.org. So it works like a hub for this whole project, including like mostly most of the relevant materials here uh, in the, here's the first page. And there's a quick start, which goes to the GAD section, how to use the RCWL pipelines, especially for the users how to install packages, get started, um, the user guide, and how to use RCWL as a developer to uh, wrap a new command line tool that is not yet included in our projects yet. So how to build uh, the inputs and the style process over here. And also we have a case study as I have just mentioned. We are trying to add more case studies over here Currently, we do have the single cell RNA sequencing pre-processing included. So basically, the um, contents are the same as we are going to live demo today. So for how to load packages, sync all the tools, and how to do the pre-processing using separate tools to index the reference genome, to align your read to the reference genome, and how to do the count filtering to produce a high quality count matrix using the 
back nectar packages, and uh, that's a combined, combined pipeline by combining these three tools into a pipeline and just one stop um, running. You don't need to run them separately. You can alternatively use the pipeline to facilitate your analysis and also shows you how to submit parallel jobs for Star Solo, for example, and how to use the Shani interface. And we do have a tutorial book. This includes more real examples, not only the single cell uh, experiment, but also including the like uh, biochar sequencing data pre preparation, submit jobs, QC summary, abundance, transcription configuration, and include some DNA sequencing alignment uh, examples and DNA variant calling examples we have not included yet. We have been constantly updating this website. And for a single CRA sick, have you be uh, soon updating some materials over here and for microRNA. And now uh, we are also planning to do some micro, uh, I say micro bounds, like uh, real examples into this tutorial book. So this is like the ultimate, ultimate book you want to refer to. Uh, if you love, like uh, do feel interested in using our tools. So we do have some links to the RCWR package, RCWR pipelines package with the most updated VNS that you can find over here and the contact information over here. So I said just to cite the case studies uh, here shows the uh, single cell RNA sequencing data preprocessing where you can refer to any time for like uh, today's workshop. And uh, the tutorial goes to the tutorial book. We have been maintaining and updating constantly with all the real examples that you can find over here. Most of the, I think I would say all of the code would be reproducible if you want to reproduce, like try to work on your own computer. If not, please just feel free to report any bugs. So for AIM-1, since we have developed the R interface for a common workflow language and using the package name called RCWL. So we are constantly implementing new and updated core functions and infrastructures to be more user-friendly. And also we are aiming to develop a universal R interface for other popular workflow languages, such as the SnakeMake. We have uh, this uh, GitHub repo called R workflow. So if you click, so if you go to github.com slash R workflow, you will see like whole repository a uh, workflow uh, languages in R. And we have uh, start initiated an R package called R SnakeMake. So using this package, I hope like people, the Python users, uh, I mean, the people can use the, uh, import the existing workflow to our pipelines that are written in SnakeMake language into R so that you can use them directly within R without any prior knowledge of SnakeMake, without any prior knowledge of Python. You can just load into your R session and use them freely. And also you only need to assign values for their required parameters, which are already de uh, like defined in their workflows. So you don't need to define any of them and you can easily submit the complete workflow through R. Uh, actually, we have a question. So do you know when R Snake Make will be available for download? It, it has some or functionalities you... already being, uh, I think it, it's already in testing uh, phase. We are not, pub we are not public, uh, it's not public yet. Uh, but feel free to test some of the major functions that are already available from GitHub. So it's not available yet from Bell Conductor, but it, I think most of the functions can be used uh, already. Chang, do you have more details? And like, thank you so much, Jella, for the question. Uh, I'm interested, yeah, actually, uh, the next flow. So uh, my question is, 
because R sometimes there for next flow is quite slow. And the, the next flow is like a good for parallelization and make you know the workflow really faster than R. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so what's the meaning of like, um, is it good to uh, have R for next flow or is it it's better? On our, it's on our radar. We Sorry? have, uh, we, it's on our radar. We have read some materials about Nextflow. It is a really nice programming language for, for bioinformaticians to use. And we are hoping to have this R interface of Nextflow uh, available for people who want to write some Nextflow, write some like uh, workflows using Nextflow. Um, yeah, actually, I, yeah, we use mostly Nextflow for like workflows. So it's really good. Okay, thank you. Now it's really good to know that you are using which of the workflow languages and then we would have like more motivation to develop these R interfaces. Okay, thank you for the questions and uh, for the, let's go ahead to the uh, second aim. So we are aiming to collect and catalog the commonly used and emerging bioinformatics tools into reproducible CWL pipelines, which is to enhance the accessibility of some advanced bioinformatics tools and software by a broader community. So as shown in this figure, the RCWL pipelines is um, a pack, our package that manages the collection of RCWL tools and pipelines. So we are currently having uh, 113 tools included and 26 pipelines. Mostly of them are like very commonly used by informatics tools, such as for DNA sequencing. We have the BWA for alignment. We have wrapped the JTK toolkit for the warrant calling and filtering. And also for bulk and single cell sequencing data, we have wrapped the tool of STAR uh, for read alignment. And we have wrapped the tool of salmon for quantification. And we have wrapped some QC tools in the RCWI pipelines. For microRNA, their reference index and microRNA discovery tools are all included here. So you don't need to develop them all from scratch. We have them ready to be used uh, using the functionalities uh, that are showing here. Let me see if I have more details, okay. So uh, some more examples can be found in the RCW book. So the RCW pipelines mainly uh, provide these three major functions for users. You don't need to develop any new tools. If you use the CW update to sync your update your with our current recipes, and you can use CW search to search a specific tool or pipeline that you are interested in, and you can load the tool and pipeline directly into R using CW load. You are free to customize any of the tools you have been loading and uh, ready to uh, execute it using the, these functions and visualize your pipelines using the plot CWL function. So as an example, I'm showing you a new antigen prediction, which is a very customized pipeline in, that is included in our CWL pipelines. So uh, this is a very complex pipeline, which include many steps. The uh, yellow boxes are the input files, and uh, the pink boxes are the output files from each specific uh, step. And this Green boxes are the tools that are included in doing the data analysis. So uh, six major steps are include, included for the DNA sequencing alignment using the BWA and RNA read quantification over here, please. Quantification uh, using Salmon, the germline somatic variant calling using GTK toolkits, annotation of facing using some, um, some uh, tools and HIA tapping and new antigen predictions. And then you only need to prepare the input of the files and run the whole pipeline. So you don't need to worry about the whole pipeline because they are all uh, compiled into one pipeline. You run the pipeline and you what you get is the new antigen candidates that are filtered and ranked in the final results. So it is very challenging to develop a pipeline 
from scratch like this, but you don't need to worry about it because we have it ready in our SWI pipelines package. And we are aiming to uh, develop this project as a community driven platform. So, uh, so any collaborations and contributions from the community are welcome. So please send more specialized set of tools and pipelines to the collection and make your pull request. Uh, so uh, I need to be faster a little bit. So the working progress for M2 that we have, uh, ex we are constantly expanding the current collections of tools and we enable this WL load function to load existing tools and pipelines uh, like existing CWL tools and pipelines from elsewhere. Like for those not including our SWL pipelines, you found somewhere else, you can load them into R and use them directly. And we are working to uh, use the tools on the cloud space. And we have initiated some analysis on the uh, Anvil, um, Anvil cloud space. So this is based on the Google cloud and we were able to use our tool uh, successfully by using the UDocker as the software tool. So it also supports Docker, Singularity, and UDocker. So for M3 is to build the foundation for establishment of community-driven platform of open source, open development of bioinformatics pipelines. And uh, so we are aiming to provide high quality workflows and promote scientific collaborations. So uh, the proposed work uh, focuses towards the community-driven platform and ecosystem uh, for open uh, source, open development, and the open review of best practice bioinformatics pipelines. The main concepts are like uh, use, develop, and participate. So for users and uh, the software and pre-built pipelines, we'll be having two stable releases every year with easy downloading and installation that are enabled through Bioconductor platform for developers, there will be some guidelines and best practices and um, for pipeline development. For example, minimal testing data set is required, will be required to make sure each pipeline will run correctly. And we also, uh, the community participation will be enabled through GitHub, Slack channel, Twitter, and even such as workshops like today's workshop. Thanks again for like inviting me to share my uh, work today. So as a summary, the RCWL reduces the learning curve required to implement workflow language and in, engage in re reproducible biomedical data analysis. And RCWL pipelines enhances accessibility of advanced bioinformatics tools and software by a broader community data analyst and bench scientist. And the platform um, enables a high quality of workflows and promotes scientific collaborations. So this research project tackles challenges in the implementation and reproducible bioinformatics analysis with a focus on large cancer genomic data measured on a gigabyte scale and explore computational strategies to enhance the accessibility of advanced computational tools and efficiency for integrative and collaborative research. So the project is supported by the University of Buffalo Clinical Translational Science Institute. And we have submitted uh, the, our manuscript already to the Journal of Bioinformatics and we have just submitted the minor revision uh, last week. So fingers crossed it will be accepted and published soon. So let's go to the lab demo. Hope I'm not going over time too much. I'll go to the GitHub repository now. And you can, if you have already installed Docker like this and all the required packages, this will take less time. You can just go to the vignette and uh, download this file called rwl underscore scrasic.rmd into your R preferred R session. I'm using Emacs here. You can use R Studio, anything you prefer. And this is the real demo. And also, let me open the new fresh R. And also, please 
let me go back to the major page. You can go to this workshop material over here to see all the workshop contents and the evaluated results over here. Uh, can you post the link in the chat, please? Okay. I'll Thank post you. them again. So the first one include go to the vignette and um, download the RMD file. And the second, you can just click on it and uh, click on the workshop um, tag. And there's a website where the case studies, either of these two can be used. Okay, I'll start my live demo now. So I have about one hour uh, for this lab demo. So let's get started. So introduction here, we just um, demonstrate a case study for the single cell RNA-seq data pre-processing using our SWL pipelines, tools and pipelines. So I do have a table over here. So uh, 10X Genomics has its own pre-processing pipeline called Cell Ranger to process the single cell RNA sequencing outputs it produces to perform the demultiplexing and the quantification. However, it requires much configuration to run and is significantly slower than the other methods. So in this case study, we are going to use the start solo for read alignment and quantification and which produces count matrix from fast Q files. And I'm gonna use the droplet utils, this um, bioconductor package for filtering the raw gene barcode matrix and removing empty droplets, which produces a high quality count matrix with feature and cell annotation files saved as an R object of single cell experiment, which is like, I think this is the most familiar thing for most of the users. And before this, we have added a one-time indexing step using star index uh, to index the reference, uh, reference genomes. First, we need to install packages. For this tutorial, I would uh, use the updated version on GitHub because we have added many, we have updated many of the functionalities in the dual version. So please, uh, evaluate this line. If you are following my live demo, evaluate this pipeline, uh, this line of code to install the RCWL and RCWL pipelines from our GitHub repo. And also evaluate this line to install these three bioconductor packages to successfully run the workflow today. So then we can library these two packages in our R session and we'll go uh, continue with the workshop. So as you are installing packages, have you introduced the data source for the single cell RNA data? So the single cell RNA seq data source is the 1K PBMC from 10X Genomics. The source files can be downloaded from Zenodo uh, data repository as I have provided here. And the data set used in this tutorial are already subsampled from the source files to contain only 15 cells. So originally there was 1000 cells. Sorry. And so we are only including uh, 15 cells instead of 1000 and the data curation is for demo purposes only so that the execution of the the pre-processing tools and uh, pipelines in our live demo can be completed within one or two minutes. And the FASTQ files data were, uh, data files were created to only include reads on chromosome 21 to expedite, expedite the execution for our workshop also. And we're gonna need a cell barcode uh, file, which contains the known cell barcodes for mapping and only 15 barcodes are included. And this reference genome, uh, this, uh, this GTF file contains the HG19 GTF file to annotate the reads, which we was also created on chromosome 21 only. So uh, we have the data available on the designated um, GitHub repository and the Zenodo data repository. Let me post this here also. OK, 
Okay, I think most of you have already have already installed the packages. So let's leverage the Git to R and we can evaluate this line. I already have cloned this data. So I don't need to do it once, uh, once again. So please evaluate this line of code and we define the path for this file path and see if all the data are available to use now. So here's the list of the data that are cloned from the data repository that I have just posted over here. It will be available on your local computer to be used in our lab demo. We also need to create an output directory to save the result files for running the tools and pipelines. So we define an output directory name called altdir and uh, create this altdir for all the output files from today's live demo. If you have any questions of installing the packages, please post on the chat board so that Chang could uh, give you some suggestions for if there was any technical issues. Thanks. So the next step is to load single cell RNA seq preprocessing tools. And uh, as I have just uh, introduced, there are three core functions from RCWL pipelines. So one is called CWL update, uh, one CWL search and CWL load. So the CWL update function syncs the current RCWL recipes and returns a CWL help object, which contains the most updated RCWL recipes. The M columns function return all related information about each available tool or pipeline. And the recipes will be locally cached so user don't need to call the CW update every time unless you want to use a tool pipeline that is newly added to the RCW pipelines. So here I have the all tools to evaluate this and we print the all tools and we can see it is a CWL hub R object with 140 records. So it shows the local cache path for uh, where all the recipes are cached locally. And the last modified, it was very, very new. We have just added some new tools and uh, some functionalities for you further to explore. So here are the uh, like BFC record, like BLC file cache record, local cache. Uh, ID for each of the tool. So uh, the tools are prefixed with PL for pipelines and the prefix with TL for tools. So currently, let's table the type of the tools. So currently we have 113 tools included and 26 pipelines included. And then when you have the local cache ready, you are free to search any tools that you are interested. So you can use multiple keywords for the search. For example, here we use the star and index to search a tool in our all tools and print the T tools and M columns of tools. We can see two record are written. One is called PL, RA6SF. One is called TL, star index. Here we're gonna use the TL star index for indexing our reference genome. And we can use the CWL load function to load the tool into the, our working environment. Here we load all the three tools that will be needed for the data processing. The recipes for developing these tools can be found in these uh, repositories uh, that you can find in the VNet. So we use CWL load to load the star and uh, load this tool called TL star index and assign a new name called star index in R so that we can see the star index. It looks like this. It is a CWL process. <coughs> the CWL class is command line tool. It is a tool instead of pipeline here and CWL version based command and some Docker requirement. This is the Docker image that is in the bell containers, which will be pulled automatically when you run this tool. You don't need to install um, the star. Um, as you don't need to install a specific command line tool into your computer. It will pull the Docker image and uh, ready for you to use immediately. 
and some input parameters for this tool, you need to assign values to put your file path of each of the parameters and you are uh, able to execute it. Let's load the other tools, the star solo. Load so the here, sorry, uh, one question. Yes. So it's my question actually. Uh, so a star, uh, you don't have to install star. You only have to a uh, Docker pool from yeah. the bio container and then you know you can run the, the star, the workflow. Right, you are correct. You don't need to pre-install any tool. So you don't need to install BWA, you don't need to install Salmon, you don't need to install star. As long as you have our package, you install like library our SWR pipelines and you load this tool that is already included in our SWR pipelines. And when you run this tool, it will automatically uh, pull the Docker of tool from the Bell Containers website. And it is ready for you to use like immediately. You don't need to install any softwares beforehand. You don't need to know the languages and like, you don't need to install any software. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. So now we have uh, Star Solo ready and we now CWI load the tool name called TL droplet utils and assigned to uh, our object named droplet utils here. So we have all the three tools available in our Let's see. So we have the star index already here and we can take a look at the star solo, which is a little bit more complicated because it requires more input uh, for the star solo for the align to do the alignment. And there's a Docker pool image uh, included here. If you are interested, you can actually customize it. If it is not a specific version that you are want to use, you can actually um, customize the, the Docker pool image. If you have like a more updated version of star on bio containers, you can use that also. That's for the customization. And there are some default arguments that users don't need to uh, change, but you are feel free to change it anytime using the functionalities. So before read alignment and quality control, a one-time genome indexing needs to be done. So the command line using star will look like this. If you are actually using a command line tool in your computer, you first need to install the star tool in your computer, and then you need to use a shell script. Something like this, you call star and some parameters like run mode, genome generate, run thread. You need to fill all the like uh, parameters and where to get your uh, GTF file, where is your FASTA files. So that's all you need if you're running it all by yourself uh, using a shell script. So uh, if you don't want to do this, we can equivalently index the genome using the RSWL tool of star index within R. So which was internally passed as CWL scripts by only assigning values to the input and the, the scripts using one of the execution functions. Then the output files are ready to pass as input to the next tool for single cell read alignment. Again, you don't need to download the tool of star. All right, shell scripts. You can just uh, use the CWL load over here, you can have star index ready to be used. So all you want to do is to assign values to the input parameters. So we already have the, we already have all the like needed fast queue files available um, for our demo. So we just assign this file path to the star. it to the results. 
let's do the show log equals to true. Let's take a look at this. Uh, can we also include uh, singularity containers? Yes. So, yeah, as it is running, thank you, Hedia, for the great question. Sarah's going to talk about it because this run, CWL, is going to take about like one to two minutes. I'll show you how to use the Docker argument. Here, the default value is true, which is the recommended way and we automatically pull Docker images from the required command line tools. And also we can define it equals to false. Uh, this is for the people who have already have the star tool uh, installed in your local computer that you already have a software installed, you don't need a Docker image. So you can specify Docker equals to false. So it doesn't pull the Docker container just to use the, your locally installed uh, star tool. It could be equals to singularity if the running environment doesn't support Docker, but singularity. And also it can support the Docker if you are running, it is a Docker like runtime without any administrator privileges. We have been using Docker on the Google Cloud, the Anvil uh, workspace, so which is successful. Uh, so for uh, like simplified, like most simplified version, we recommend you to use Docker equals to true or singularity or like you Docker, anything uh, is most convenient, most appropriate to your own computer or your uh, high performance computing. Great question, thank you so much. Thank oh, you. it's done, great. Let's take a look at the output directory. So we have defined output path to be star index output as we have specified here. When we run CWL, we have uh, created a new folder called the star index underscore output and uh, under the out path. And we can take a look at the output files. Here are the, all the output files are saved under this directory. And these are ready to be passed into as an input for the next tool. All the uh, reference genome are indexed now. And for the alignment, since we already have the star solo. So there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are seven input parameters we need to assign values to. As we can see, these last three are already have a default values assigned. So you don't need to worry, but you can also uh, use another value. You can still assign another value to these parameters. They are just default values over here. Uh, you do need to assign values for this um, CDA, FASTQ file, uh, the cell barcode, uh, FAST file, and genome directory from the uh, genome directory from the previous uh, tool and the whitelist for the cell barcode. Here we define the path is for all the needed files and assign. So all the assign all the file paths to these four parameters. Read files in CDA, read files in cell barcode, whitelist, genome directory. And we take another look at the start solo. In the input section, we can see except for three parameters with um, default values, all the other four parameters now have an absolute path for the input files. And let's run this. So Docker equals to true is the default, so you don't need to like write it every time, but I'm just showing you more specifically. Show log equals to true. And we assign it to race in case there will be any issues. So this again will take about two minutes, a little bit longer than the indexing, but it should be working correctly. See some logs started. 
start run because it has already pulled the Docker from the bell containers. So it can run it directly from R. And it's loading genome, started mapping. So this will take a little bit time, like no more than two minutes. And then we can ready, we are ready to see the output. So any questions so far? Great. Yeah, I see some people are already work, uh, running the live demo successfully. Thank you, that tool. So I can hear my computer fans running. <laughs> So you're running it uh, not in the server, in your local No, computer. I'm using my local computer. Oh, OK, because yeah, we, we are hearing the. Are you on high performance computing now? Uh, no, but I'm curious if we can use this workflow on the HPC. OK. So you're using it on HPC? Oh, it is really fast today. <laughs> okay, nice. As we can see, we were in the start mapping step and take some time and finish the mapping and started solo counting, finish solo counting, finish successfully. Final process status is successful. Perfect. And let's take a look at the output files. So as we have uh, defined the output directory called star solo underscore output, when we run the CWL script of star solo, and we can take a look at this output uh, folder to see what has been outputted. Yes, the align SAM file and the solo directory with all the files that will be needed for the next tool. Okay, let's go to the next step. So the count filtering, uh, to, in order to get a high quality count matrix, we apply the droplet utils bio conductor package, which will produce a filtered data set that is more representative of the cell range uh, pipelines. Since the CWL itself doesn't support the integration of our packages or our function, as I have just said, most of the workflow languages only manages, uh, only wraps the like upstream pre-processing command line tools. They don't wrap the downstream RBEL conductor packages or functions. That's a, like a disadvantage of using the command, uh, common uh, workflow languages. But here we have uh, implemented this uh, unique feature for our package called CWL, RCWL, where we can easily connect to the upstream data pre-processing steps mainly based on command line tools and the downstream data analysis steps heavily done in RM Bioconductor. So the idea here is to put anything you need into a user-defined R function with the specified arguments for input and output files. Then it's ready to be wrapped in some RCWL tools for execution. For example, in wrapping the package of droplet utils functionalities, we wrote this RCWL tools called droplet utils with three major steps. Let me open this link. So this is the script that we have written. Uh, we have written and so that users don't need to. And uh, we wrote a function, our function called droplet utils. Three major steps are included. First, let me uh, reference. First step is to use the read 10 X count function to read the raw alignment files and convert into a single style experiment. Here, the first step, read 10 X counts, like a droplet utils function to read in the 
uh, files and convert it into our object of single cell experiment. And the second is to calculate the barcode ranking and plotting. And third is calculate empty droplets and plotting. So this is the second step using barcode ranks and uh, um, plotting it and using the empty drops function to call the empty droplets and plot. So there's the plot for the rank and the so plot for the uh, empty empty droplets. As the output here, we have um, <clears throat> after this filtering. So by removing those empty droplets from the uh, the input, we only keep those uh, non-empty droplets and uh, assign a, assigned to a single cell experiment object and save it in the RDS file here. <clears throat> so this part is about the RCWL uh, tool. So here, okay. CWL prime is, is not updated. Here should be CWL percent. I'm sorry about this. This should be a CWL process and by using the base command, the drop, droplet utils, this name comes from the function name over here. So use the function name over here as the base command, use the input parameters for the director names, lower and DF, which are required for this droplet utils function of a 10x, rate 10x count, barcode ranks, the lower DF are for this barcode ranks and the empty jobs. So three uh, input parameters, like three arguments are needed for a user to input and two output files will be collected. One is the plot uh, for uh, empty droplets and uh, uh, barcode ranks. And the other output is the single cell experiment object, saved as an RDS. And we uh, wrap it using CWL process base command equals to the function name and input of this P1, P2, P3 and output as 0102. So let's do, you do need to install the package called droplet utils because you're calling some functionalities of it. We take a look at this inputs for this tool or the whole, after wrapping, it is a CW process. <laughs> it's a command line tool. Uh, base command is an R function. It's not a like a command line tool. It is an R function. That's the unique feature of our packages. And the inputs, three inputs are required. Two are with uh, default values, uh, but we do need to, um, change some of the default values over here. So let's assign the star solo output solo.out as the input directory for the droplet utils so that we are connecting these two tools together. And we change some of the default values for the DF because we are only having like less 15 cells. And we do the Results equals to Docker equals to true, show log equals to true. So this step is really fast because it only runs an R function. So it load the package and do the data analysis. Okay, the final process is the size. And we can take a look at the directory name as we have uh, created an output directory in outpath called droplet utils underscore output. And we can list all the output files here. So as we have just showed you, we have we are trying to collect two uh, files in the output. One is the PDF file containing the barcode ranks and empty droplets. And the other is the RDS file containing the filtered clean uh, single cell experiment object. Let's open it and take a look. So here's the barcode ranks figure and the empty droplet figure. So for more details of these two figures, you need to reference the droplet utils vignette over here. 
And let's load a single site experiment into our R session to see how it looks. See? <clears throat> All within R, we can run the star index to index the reference genome, and we can run the star solo to align your race into the uh, genome. And then we can use, we can connect them directly to the bioconductor uh, package called droplet utils and the, some of the functionalities. And now we have a single cell experiment object, which is familiar to most of the people for you ready to be used in your downstream data analysis. So after filtering, there are only 10 cells that are contained. We originally have 15. So five of them are identified as empty droplets and removed from the droplet utility step. And now we have a clean data set with only 10 cells and all the related information are included as an R object. So that is much easier for people to do any downstream data analysis. <clears throat> So uh, as for now, we have already in introduced the three um, tools, which are star index, star solo, and droplet utils. Uh, instead of running these tools separately, we can combine this together into a pipeline uh, so that you can only run the pipeline once. You don't need to run the tools separately. That's how the workflow works. It makes it more convenient for people to run the whole pipeline, make it, make it, make it more reproducible. So we have this recipe here uh, for the pipeline. Let's take a look. So as I have just showed you some like pseudo code for how to construct uh, a workflow. So we define all the input parameters for the whole pipeline. We need the fastq files, genome directory, batch list, run thread. And we define the first uh, step as star solo, which takes all of this input. Okay, the ID, this ID is for this step. So run equals to star solo. This star solo refers to the tool of star solo. We have, the, we have um, defined somewhere else. <clears throat> And the droplet utils set the step two. We assign an ID for this step two called droplet utils, which runs the droplet utils uh, tool we have defined previously. And the input of the droplet utils tools will be the output of star solo. So this shows the, this is the ID name of the, the star solo tool. Okay, this is the ID name of step one over here. ID equals to star solo for step one. And this solo is the output directory for this um, step one. And we define all the outputs from the whole pipeline. So previously we have outputted the aligned stem file from uh, star solo outline and the solo directory from star solo solo. And we also want the uh, single cell experiment object from the droplet YouTube step out as C, this is defined as the ID of the output from the tool called droplet utils. And we also want to plot uh, file for cell bar, uh, the empty droplets and the <clears throat> cell on the cell, uh, the barcode ranks, which comes from the tool called droplet utils and the output parameter called props. And then we initiate they start solo droplet utils using CWL um, workflow. Again, I have no idea it's not updated here. I, I will update it soon. So by, um, okay. Okay, I'm clicking on the wrong link. Chang has just posted the updated link uh, in, the Zoom, uh, in the Zoom box. So, and then we can add, use the plus sign to add these tools and together into a pipeline. The pipeline will be called star solo droplet utils. Blob master. Okay, so I just need to create the master into devel over here so that we can have the correct links. 
So let's use the same method of CWL load to load this pipeline. Let's take a look at this pipeline. Okay, this pipeline here shows the classic CWL workflow. Uh, remember, we have been using CWL process for a specific tool, but for workflow, the class will be CWL workflow. And that the input for the whole pipeline will be three files are needed. And the output, we have outputted four file, four like files or directories. First is uh, the uh, align the same file and the solo directory from star solo and uh, single cell experiment objects from Jumplate Utils and the uh, um, <coughs> barcode ranks and empty Joplet plus from uh, Joplet Utils. Four files will be outputted and it shows all the steps that will be included in this workflow. The first step is called star solo, which runs the star solo.cwl. The second is step is droplet utils the input and output, which connects all the input and outputs of the tools. And now we can take a look at, we can use the plot CWL function to take a look at uh, this workflow. So the first tool it included is star solo. The second tool it included is the droplet utils, which are represented as a diamond for tools. And these squares are the input files and the uh, circles are the output files from a specific tool. So for in total four output files will be collected from this pipeline. So I need to, we need to assign values for each of the five uh, input parameters. Let's do it now and uh, put it into a run, which will take about three minutes and we we'll, at the same time, we we'll, I will introduce you some other stuff. <clears throat> so for our CWL pipelines, we only need to assign input values for the whole pipeline, not for the individual tools involved. And the input and output between each steps are predefined in the pipeline to ensure smooth passing. So here, five uh, input parameters are required for the whole pipeline. And we assign values and we run, we submit this pipeline called star solo droplet utils. And we need to um, create a directory called sc pipeline underscore output. So all the four output uh, files will be outputted to this directory. So as we can see started uh, start run. So it started the mapping um, of the reads using star solo. So this step will take about two minutes and um, and we can, as we can see the log, it will show the droplet utils for filtering the uh, for filtering the count matrices. So in the meantime, I'll try to see if I have this correct. Yes, yeah, so that will flow here.
Okay, as we can see, it has been completed uh, successfully by running the pipeline, which include the star solo and droplet tutus together. As we have, uh, as we have defined four output for this pipeline, let's take a look at the output directory to see if we get all the four outputs ready. So, so we got the aligned sample file, we got the a single cell experiment object, and we got the diagnostic PDF, we get the folder of solo.out ready uh, in the pipeline output. So now we have also showed you how to run the pipeline by combining different tools. And next, so mostly the pre-processing steps are done, but I want to show you some additional functionalities if you are spe uh, specifically, if you're using high performance computing. So it will be of special, like particular help, uh, helpful to run your samples parallelly to expedite it to the, the process. So powered by the BLC Parallel, RCWL supports parallel job running for multiple samples using the RCWL batch function. So the following example demonstrates how to do the parallel alignment for the two samples using the Star Solo tool. Uh, first, we can use the BLC BP prime um, argument in the RCWL batch. So when we do the rest of the batch, there's an argument called uh, BP prime. So which can be defined using the Belsey parallel function called batch tools prime. So you can define the workers and uh, clusters here. Like this is just an example showing you if you are using a SGES submitting system and you assign two workers, and you use the template of the SGE and you can define your BP prime and pass it into the run CWL batch uh, function. Here, because I'm running it in my local computer, I can only use the multi core for the par parallel running. So uh, I'll use this line to define the BP prime by assigning two workers for running two samples parallelly and the cluster name equals to Malikar. So as I showed earlier, it can be SGE, it can be Slurm, uh, it can be Malikar and, and something else. If you click on this link, you can see some more options available. And also for running the batch uh, jobs, we need to define another two arguments in run CWL um, batch. See, there's a input list and there is a prime list. The input list argument is required to be a list of input parameter values for samples that are to be computed parallelly. So, and the name of the list must be consistent with the ideas of input parameters. In this example, the, the names of the list here. Input list equals to a list. The read files in CDA is a list. So sample one, the uh, so read files in CDNA uh, is the, the ID of the input parameter. So for this input parameter, we have two samples what we, and we want to submit them parallelly. So sample one equals to CDNA dot fast Q, sample two equals to CDNA fast Q. So we are just mimicking two different samples. We are actually using one sample, but we are submitting them parallelly just to show you how to use the parallel computing. And the other argument is called read files in cell um, barcode. So two cells, two samples are included. One is called cb.fastq. This is the file path for cell barcode uh, fastq file. And this is file path to the cell barcode fastq file to for the same cell. So if I have more cells in this demo, I only have one cell. Sorry, we only have one sample, but if you have more samples, you can use different file path for different samples here. So this input list is mainly required to, for the like samples that you are going to be computing uh, parallelly, but the prime list is to define the prime tests that are to be shared when you run the parallel job by the two samples. 
So in either sample, you need to define their batch list, you need to define their genome directory and how many thread you're gonna use for each of the parallel job. So with the BP prime input prime list and prime list, we can run, we can call the run CWL batch. Here we are running the star solo uh, tool. The output directory is called star solo batch output. Import list, prime list, BP prime, we have all defined them. Did I? So I have to evaluate these lines. And let's wait another two minutes for the star solo to run the two samples parallelly. It's supposed to be much faster if you have multiple files to be uh, submitted together. So it don't take a line for each sample. They are just submitted all together. So in the meantime, I go back to correct my uh, recipes over here, droplet utils I have corrected, droplet utils, uh, devile, okay, let me see my star solo script. I think I have included somewhere over here, yes. Including star index. Choose. Star solo. Okay, I'm not showing the log, but it's better to enable the show log equals to true when you're running so that it's easier for you to troubleshoot. Okay, seems uh, we got uh, it run successfully. We got a two, list of two items here. Let's show the directory. As we can see, we have two separate directories. One is called sample one, which have all the four outputs, the align sample file. Uh, we have all the output from the star solo for sample one and all of the star solo output for sample two. They are saved in separate directories. So this is how you can submit parallel job uh, if you're working on HPC. And here I'm showing you another function for doing Shani, uh, for using our Shani interface. So the CWL Shani function opens a user-friendly Shani interface for running any RCWL tools or pipelines. By default, users need to put in the absolute file path for each input parameter. So multiple file paths need to be separated by column and uh, no white space. So click the run button to view start running on the return output files. Let me start this. So it opens a link for you where you can put out input files. If you have more files, 
separate them using colon and uh, path one, path two. And for the cell barcode, path one, path two, I'm just using pseudocode. And uh, these are required. If you don't uh, assign values for some required field and you click run, if you get an error message telling you that the genome directory is empty because you don't have it, like ABC, let's try it again. So the ABC does not exist. So if you check the file path and you need to assign something, when you have a, like some like a valid file path is included, assigned to these parameters, if you run successfully and give you all the output, showing you the file passes of the output folder and you can check the command and the log over here. So it's quite easy. And uh, in, let's say I have included a figure here. So that's how I have run it successfully. As I have uh, put in the absolute file path of my input files. And here you can see a comma to separate like two different files. And uh, here you can see a comma to separate two different cell barcode files and the genome directory name and the whitelist file path and some default values and you click run each will return you the out output files and um, with the absolute file path is and you can click on the command or log to see uh, how your code has been running. So basically that's it. And uh, thank you all for following me. It's a pretty long workshop. I wonder if anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourself and we can do a live uh, talk. Thank you so much. I'll stop sharing now. Uh, thank you very much. So please, if you have questions, can you post them in the chat box? Hey Heidi, I, th I think the, the video will be uploaded to the YouTube channel later, right? Yes, we will send also an email with all the materials and slides. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so I have a question. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So, Go ahead. Uh, okay. So is uh, this uh, like uh, RCWL uh, faster than the, you know, doing the all the workflow in shell or command line or in other, you know, workflow languages? I don't think so. So internally, they are translating your R scripts into um, CWL scripts. So they are internally running the same CWL. If you're, if you're running CWL in the shell, or I, I think you mean more like running those uh, tools separately in shell, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, that, towards, that will be faster because if you're running those tools separately, those are very time, consu time consuming because you need to monitor the step one. And once, Step one is done. You need to like run your step two and uh, convert the formats of the, the output of step one and input of uh, step two. So there be include many manual monitoring of the connecting the tools. So um, our tool is internally running as a CWL scripts. Everything is predefined between all the tools. When you run the pipeline, all the tools will be run one by one. Like you don't need to worry about taking care of like a specific tool because they are all predefined. I think it will be faster. 
by using like common workflow language and our like uh, running those command line tools uh, one by one. And also our um, packages had a, like a upper level wrapping on, of CWL, which makes it more easier for people to use it within RN. It should be faster by running than running the command line tools uh, separately in shell. Okay, thank you. Any other question? So I think we don't have more questions. So thank you all for the nice words. Thank you very much, Dr. Chianyu, for this amazing workshop. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much again for, nice for joining this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll send you all the materials with the slides and the recording will be on our YouTube channel. Yes. Thank you. Feel free Bye to bye. contact me using emails, the Twitter accounts, and on our GitHub repo for pull request, issue report, and anything, any specific questions, feature request. And we are always open to questions. And we always welcome for contributions to our um, project. Thank you again for inviting me. If you need any more like materials from the attendees, please just uh, head up. Please feel free to let me know. I will give you all them. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very bye. much.